Hi guys, thank you so much for being here and I really do hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to talk you through this, the Yugoslavian Mess Kit. It is everything you need packed into one small package. It is a water bottle, it is a bowl, it is a saucepan, there is a cup, um, your cutler is in there and there's a few added benefits as well that I'm gonna talk you through. Let's have a look inside of this and show you around. Let's get into this proper. First of all, we have a canvas bag here that holds it, or canvas case even. Um, it can hold everything very, very snug and it does hold everything very snug. Here in the loop hole that would normally allow you to sort of thread this onto your belt or if you had the right kind of clip attached to molly webbing, we have, or what, I, what I've put in there is a, uh, a mill bank bag. And just because I can filter straight into these pans and makes life easier. But that is, of course, just an optional extra and something that does not come with the kit. The clasp itself is, um, I don't know what the clasp is called, essentially there's a little knobble and, uh, and that fits, as you can see, very snugly. <laughs> and once it snugly fits, let me pull it tighter, it clasps over and uh, two little sort of pincer things grip it but you just pop it open to open it. First of all, we have uh, the cutlery and then we have the unit itself. So pop the canvas bag to one side for a moment. The cutlery itself, it's all nesting together. We have not necessarily just a spork, but three separate utensils. We have a very hefty spoon. There we have a fork that has a generous wide bowl to it, three tines. The knife itself has a very sharp edge. It has serration on one of the edges. It also has a, a bottle opener and a can opener as well. So it is a pretty multi-use knife. Um, the handle itself, because it holds the, the fork and the spoon, um, is wider as well, giving it a very comfortable grip uh, and a solid grip at that. Into the mess tins proper. We, as I mentioned earlier, there it is um, 818 grams in total. This is with everything that you see without my Millbank bag. If we pop the handle on there, that is the handle of the, the pan, which is located at the bottom. This top thing here is the large bowl, which is a very snug fit. All of this is a very snug fit, which for me is a, a wonderful positive. I've used a many, many cooking utensil uh, and kit sets. They rattle. I've found very few that have not rattled. This is one of the ones that um, you don't get a sort of a, a, a ditty out of. So that is the bowl. The bowl holds uh, 800 uh, milliliters, and we'll get onto what this little knob is in, in a short while. The lid there, of, on top of the bottle is actually a cup. Um, it came loose then because I pulled the bowl off very vigorously and, and knocked it, but that, again, holds well upside down. The cup is 200 milliliters, and uh, we'll, get, we'll get into the, the usefulness of, um, of their design very shortly. Inside we have the water bottle, and this is the aluminium cooking pan. Now this pan, or pot, if you'd call it that, um, aluminium inside, outside, I believe this is enameled. The, the cleanly, the, or the, so the ease of clean on this is wonderful. Um, you can see it is slightly sooty from the last juice I had, but I cleaned it off with just a tiny bit of sphagnum moss, rubbed it off, all the soot, I mean, it was caked in soot as, the, as all pans tend to be. Um, just wipe it off and uh, it was ready to go. The inside cleans phenomenally well. I mean, look at that, I haven't, done anything special to that after I've cooked in it. I've just cleaned it out and it's great condition. I mean, there's a few marks in there, but they're wear and tear marks rather than uh, food marks. The handle locks at a 90 degree angle from the actual pan itself. And it has this, uh, this little hook, which we'll get to shortly. The bottle, uh, I'd estimate that that holds around, if that holds, I'd say that's about the same as that pot. So we're looking at about 800 milliliters, I'd say. Uh, for the, the capacity on the, um, on the actual pot itself. The water bottle holds a litre. It is phenomenally thick plastic. You can just about bend it if you put all your strength in, and I'm a fairly strong chap, so 
Uh, you can just about get the bend, but the, the corners will not bend. I'm, I would wager that I could possibly stand on this without breaking it. Um, I don't want to break it, so I don't want to test it, but um, I definitely don't feel like this is going to be easily crushed. The fact that when you're carrying it, it is nested within me metal and another piece of plastic pretty much guarantees that your water is going to be safe and it's not going to break and uh, you're not going to end up without a drink in the wild. The lid, slight, slightly bit squeaky, um, so if you're doing covert missions, perhaps you, uh, you want to think about ways that you could uh, stop that being squeaky. Um, it essentially screws off, um, you fill it up, it's a container. What more can be said? What can be said is that there's a modification here in the lid. I shall come up close to show you. There we go, this here is a 30 millimeter ball diaphragm that you can find in your local hardware store. In the UK, um, B&Q supplied these for me. I think I got two for uh, £1.40 or something like that, which is next to nothing. Um, that is just to stop any potential leaks. With the ex-military stuff, um, some of it, you, you never know the sort of the quality that you're getting, especially with, um, with uh, these ones. Something that I read on the internet was that Sometimes overzealous cleaners may have wire-walled the, the top and, and wrecked the seal at the, at the very top of the cap. So in order to just be sure and safe, this ball, uh, ball diaphragm will stop any leakages. I've certainly not had, had any leakages. This thing's been upside down in my pack, shaken all over and no water comes out whatsoever. Right, um, onto the cup and the bowl. The cup and the bowl have a great feature, which is they have a completely shallow profile as in the, the the entry to the bowl is the outside of the container in a situation where you may need to collect water being able to place that directly into the water source even a shallow one is a phenomenal benefit a lip might stop you from getting as low as you need to this will enable you to get as low as you possibly can and of course if your puddle or whatever you're you're filtering from or collecting water from is is too big for that you can turn it on its side you know you've got a lot of options with that and the same is true for the for the cup the outside of the bowl and the cup also has a, a ridged pattern that enables you to get a good deal of grip on there and these are lovely to hold when they contain warm foods for example um, I've been eating warm ramen noodles out of the out, out of these cooked in this tipped into there and you're literally holding it and it keeps the warmth in very, very nicely. And it radiates the warmth very slowly due to the fact that it's thick plastic, but you, get, you, you won't get burned, but your hands will stay very much warm. I mentioned this knob before, and I mentioned this hook before. A nice feature that you can do here once you've finished cooking is to fill up this pot perhaps with some rice. So you do your rice first maybe, um, and then have your main in there. You can slot the handle into the bowl and it just means that you can hold that like so while you're eating a bit of portion from each so you can have two separate meals on the go it just gives you a bit more luxury when you're out and about another great feature is that if you are doing things like noodles you don't need to keep them on the heat all the time once they start boiling this can simply sit on the top and it clicks into place and now you have got a steaming system. Water is not evaporating from that. It will simply drop back in and steam your food gradually. So there's a lot that can be done with this kit. I would say, for me, it is one of the most versatile kits that I've, I've had the pleasure of using. Um, it all fits down into a very small space. Um, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's all very sturdy. The only thing I'd say is that because it's sort of X issue, you may need to drop it. Well, in fact, I would recommend that you drop it into a tub with some steri tablets. That could be sterilizing tablets for um, for babies' bottles and things like that. I dropped in about eight, dropped in everything, obviously not the canvas bag, but I did wash the canvas bag despite its grubby look. It just means that I've used it well. Um, and drop everything in, submerge it in there, leave it for an hour or so, rinse it all off in hot water to be, again, to be sure, to be sure and you have yourself a great piece of kit that you could even wear on, on your body. Um, the, uh, the other thing I was going to say is that when, when you've got that full of water, obviously water roughly has the same um, gram, um, uh, uh, sorry, it has the, roughly the same literage as grams. So 
a litre of water in there is going to add a thousand grams to your weight. So in total, if you fill that up with water and took it ready, took it with you ready to go, you're looking at about 1,820 grams or thereabouts. For me, one of the best things about the Yugoslavian mess kit is the fact that it is so affordable. It ranges somewhere from five pounds in the UK right up until a maximum, and I haven't seen any more than this, of 20 pounds in the UK. The difference in price can be put down to one simple thing, the quality. These are army surplus, don't forget that. So some of them are grubby as hell. Other ones are virtually brand new as though they've just come off the, the production line. So, that's what you need to consider. If you're a bit of a neat freak and you need it to be perfect, you're gonna be paying top end of that price. If you are a bit more accepting of cleaning things up and sterilizing them yourself and making them look a bit more like new, then you can pay five pounds for it. It's great as well. It might not necessarily be the lightest weight kit, but it has everything there. The problem I've had with some of the lightweight kits is that yes, you, they are lightweight, but you end up with wasted space or you don't just have everything you need. You have to sort of improvise and turn one thing into another. Here you have a comprehensive kit that literally packs down and you saw it to, to not very much. I'll put the specs up on screen. In fact, I'll have probably put them up at the start as well. So you've seen the specs, you know it's not a large space whatsoever. The Milbank bag as well, fitting into the, uh, into the uh, belt loop. That for me is a double bonus because it means everything I need to keep myself hydrated in the wild is in one place for me. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this review, if you have any questions about the Yugoslavian mess kit, drop me a comment in the section down there and I'll happily answer them. Until the next video, happy bushcrafting, take care, bye bye now.